Binge watching Kim Woo Bin's latest work, at 16, he became the youngest black belt in judo, by 17, he was already a third degree sword master, in that same year, he achieved a grand slam in taekwondo, yet, this outstanding young man decided to trade his combat gear for a delivery uniform, bringing delicious meals to food lovers. Thank you so much. This is the service. After wrapping up his last delivery of the day, Young Du was eager to join his friends for a round of PUBG, but on his way home, he encountered something that would change his life forever. Two men were brawling in the street. It wasn't until a man in uniform subdued one of them that Yung Du realized things were far from simple. Out of nowhere, the man in red launched a sneak attack, turning the fistfight into a full-blown armed confrontation. With a strong sense of justice, Yung Du knew he couldn't just stand by and watch. <coughs> His heroic intervention earned him an Outstanding Citizen Award. Kim Sun Min, an official, later explained the situation. In Korea, there are around 5,000 individuals wearing electronic ankle monitors people who have committed serious crimes like sexual assault and murder. To prevent them from reoffending, the Ministry of Justice created a team of officers tasked with monitoring them. These officers, known as martial arts officers, don't have the same level of training or equipment as the police but they play a crucial role in keeping an eye on these dangerous individuals. Hearing about this unusual job, Yung Du's curiosity was piqued. After all, when he wasn't delivering food for his dad, he was hanging out with his buddies, gaming. His impressive martial arts skills didn't go unnoticed by the Ministry of Justice, either. Before he knew it, Yung Du was temporarily stepping in for an injured martial arts officer, becoming part of the team. <laughs> At first, Yung Du thought the job would be straightforward just waiting for an offender's ankle monitor to run low on battery before springing into action, but after a whole day of waiting, nothing unusual happened. Just as Yung Du started to get drowsy, he noticed that one person on the map in the Eastern District had turned yellow. This was at his big moment. Following protocol, he made the first move, calling the man to gently remind him that it was time to recharge his monitor, but before Yung Du could even finish speaking, the call was abruptly cut off. A second call was met with nothing but vile insults. The man was obviously provoking him. Inside, the offender was preparing to commit an unspeakable act. Outside, Kim Sun Min was pleading with him not to do something he would regret. The victim managed to open the door just as the man leaped from the window and Yung Du was already waiting downstairs, ready for action. <laughs> After his first experience, Yung Du grew even more fond of the job. With his natural martial arts skills, those offenders looking to commit crimes again didn't stand a chance. The team leader, grateful for Yung Du's help, invited him out for dinner, but Yung Du, ever loyal to his friends, declined, saying he already had plans with them. The phrase never forget your roots could describe Yung Du perfectly, though his buddies didn't go easy on him at dinner. Their wild night gave the team leader a glimpse into the fun of being young. After a satisfying meal, everyone was about to head home when the unit received a sudden call. A murderer's ankle monitor had gone off the grid, leaving the team leader worried. Their tech-savvy friend, Fatty, who knew the area well, immediately volunteered to help track the criminal. As they searched the location, they found the ankle monitor abandoned, indicating the killer had already decided to go rogue. Determined to track him down quickly, the group, now energized from dinner, kicked into gear. With the help of a drone, they managed to lock onto the murderer's exact location. <laughs> Panting from the chase, Yung Du urged the man not to do anything foolish, but the killer wasted no time and launched an attack. With no real fighting skills, the man couldn't last a single round against Yung Du. Just as Yung Du called the team leader to confirm they could move in for the arrest, 
The unexpected happened, the man, a convicted murderer, seemed bent on killing himself that night. Yong Du was baffled why would someone who had killed before now turn the knife on themselves. The team leader, on the other end of the phone, calmly instructed Yong Du to pass along a message. <laughs> <laughs> Yung Du had always thought criminals deserved their fate, but the man's words revealed a deeper truth. Some offenders genuinely seek redemption, guided by the team leader's words. Yung Du carefully relayed the message. After years of seeking redemption, the murderer finally dropped his knife, abandoning his deadly intent. That night, back home, Yung Du couldn't help but share the experience with his father. He realized that this job wasn't just about fighting violence with violence, and his father was proud to see his son maturing. However, the next second, a news report on TV stirred a sense of unease in the older man's heart. 4년 동안 경찰 피해서 13살 5명이나 성폭행을 했습니다. The Ministry of Justice soon held an emergency meeting, faced with such ruthless criminals. Even after they are released from prison, more resources are needed to monitor them. However, the team leader voiced concerns that the martial arts officers were severely understaffed. There weren't enough qualified candidates, and the government wasn't willing to allocate additional funds, making it impossible to provide specialized monitoring. After the meeting, the team leader ran into Yung Du. Normally, the injured martial arts officer would resume their duties after recovery, but Yung Du had something different to say. <laughs> when the dangerous criminal Khan Ki Young was released, Yung Du felt an unfamiliar sense of pressure for the first time. Although there was hardly any communication between them, Yung Du could tell that Khan was not someone to be taken lightly. As the police escorted Khan, the public's fury was palpable. In the eyes of many, criminals like him deserved nothing less than the death penalty. Some citizens even climbed onto the transport vehicle, condemning the government for aiding such a criminal by offering him an escort. <laughs> On a nearby balcony, a little girl watched curiously, unaware that the convicted sex offender had already swept his gaze over her. Her father quickly pulled her inside, knowing all too well that a man like him was no better than a demon. On his first day back in society, the man didn't take any immediate action, however, when an old acquaintance showed up, he learned that despite wearing an ankle monitor, as long as he stayed within the same building, it wouldn't trigger any alarms. The two met on the rooftop, where they chatted freely, it was clear that the man who had been released earlier had already paved the way for him. The next morning, Yung Du began his surveillance, but as soon as he entered the building, Kang disappeared from sight. His heart raced when he saw a sign pointing to a children's activity class he feared Kang might be targeting kids again. The team leader, however, reassured him that it wasn't class time yet. <laughs> Yung Du continued his search down to the underground parking lot, but still couldn't find any trace of Kong. Something about one of the parked cars gave Yung Du an uneasy feeling. With no other choice, the team leader ultimately decided to call Kong Ki Young directly, realizing that the Ministry of Justice was onto him. Kong Ki Young pretended to be looking for a restaurant inside the mall. Though Yung Du eventually spotted him dining in a restaurant, he was convinced that Kong had done something else during his time in the mall. Before long, the previously injured martial arts officer returned to duty, strengthening the team's ability to monitor criminals. However, just as the ministry was about to reassign manpower, tragedy struck. A young girl from a nearby neighborhood was suddenly abducted by a man in black while playing with a dog. She was locked in a soundproof room, and her captor put on a devilish mask. Kang Ki Young was promised 10 million won for filming the event though he was unaware that the ministry had issued a yellow alert just 10 minutes earlier. Although Yung Du had previously used a taser to incapacitate the criminal, preventing any immediate threat, 
The team leader remained concerned about Kang Kyung's activities. Despite Yoon Do keeping a close watch on him, the team leader didn't want the criminal to cause any more trouble. He decided to personally investigate the situation, along with a colleague. When the two arrived at a scrapyard, a sharp scream from a woman sent panic coursing through the team leader. They tried to leave quickly, only to find the scrapyard already surrounded by criminals. These offenders, harboring deep hatred for martial arts officers, had gathered in large numbers to eliminate the thorn in their side. The veteran officer fought valiantly, managing to pin down one of the criminals, but in the next moment, a heavy blow from a bat left him defenseless. The fight ended in a crushing defeat for the officers. Meanwhile, Yong Du wasn't faring much better. While tracking Kang ki -yong, he inadvertently walked into a trap, finding himself surrounded by a gang of criminals. <laughs> They beat him from the hallway to the plaza, but thanks to his formidable martial arts skills, he didn't let them gain the upper hand. After the fight, Yung Du tried desperately to call the team leader, but there was no answer on the other end. With no time to waste, he hurried to locate Kang ki -yong. Just as the twisted show was about to begin filming, Yung Du rushed toward his next move, arriving at the suspect's house. Yung Du noticed a fresh set of footprints leading to the basement, his sharp instincts told him that things were about to spiral out of control. He frantically tugged at the welded security bars while urging nearby neighbors to call the police. Dragging his injured body, Yung Du pushed forward to rescue the girl, but just as he reached her, her terrified expression revealed the danger he hadn't anticipated Kang ki struck again, stabbing Yung Du before he could react. Thankfully, the police arrived just in time, but Kang, with his immense physical strength, seemed impervious to their tasers. Armed officers were ready to open fire, but in the chaos, Kang ki managed to slip through their grasp and escape. Two days later, Yung Du woke up in the hospital. The Minister of Justice informed him that the team leader was critically injured and still in surgery, while another officer had been declared brain dead at the scene. <laughs> Despite being hailed as a brave citizen once again, Yung Du was now driven by a single purpose to bring the criminal to justice. Without the help of his team leader and fellow officers, Yung Du had no choice but to rely on his friends. That day, a suspicious black car in the underground parking garage caught their attention, so they started by investigating the owner's identity. Once they located the address, they didn't rush Fatty. Their tech-savvy friend would handle things with his gadgets. The man pushed open the door and noticed that the lock had been damaged. As the owner tried to figure out what had gone wrong, Yung Du had already grown suspicious. Working together, they quickly restrained the homeowner. Fatty then discovered hundreds of incriminating videos on the computer, and after some friendly persuasion, the man confessed everything. That night, Yung Du and his crew launched their operation. <sighs> Kang ki -yung came at Yung Du with a punch, but the long-legged Yung Du kept his distance, giving the criminal no chance to close in. With his unmatched Taekwondo skills, Yung Du landed a series of devastating spinning kicks leaving Kang bloodied. Despite this, Kang ki managed to ram into Yung Du with brute force, spotting a kitchen knife nearby. The criminal saw a glimmer of hope. <laughs> Knowing he was outmatched, Kang resorted to close combat, using his raw strength to drag Yung Du to the ground. He pummeled the young man with punch after punch, leaving Yung Du struggling to hold on. Yung Du's friends, watching him take a beating, couldn't bear to see him in such a dire position. Then, just in time, Fatty pulled off a brilliant move that turned the tide of the fight. With everything he had left, Yung Du delivered a final, crushing blow to Kong. A week later, Yung Du received personal recognition from the president, and even his friends were awarded the title of brave citizens, though the world still had many dark corners yet to be cleaned up. As long as Yung Du was around, he would make sure to purge the filth from it.